All righty, folks, we got to thank Millennial Mike for the inspiration for a growing brand new playlist where new investors come on the channel and share their story. We have the one and only Brian. Brian, how you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Why don't you do yourself or do us a favor and introduce yourself to the audience, where you at, what you do, a little bit about <laughs> your story. Sure. So um, we live in Minnesota here, St. Paul area uh, in Minnesota. And we've been investing for, I don't know, four, closer, closer to four years now. Okay. Um, and just started our journey a long time ago in real estate investing just by owning a house. You know, when I was 23 years old, we bought our first house. Wow. In, yeah. Cool. Yeah. In, uh, in May 31st of 2006. I don't oh, think wow. I could have, I don't think I could have drew it up any, any worse. <laughs> yeah, May of 2006, that was right at the peak. You, you Brian, nailed you may it. have bought at the top. You nailed it. I nailed it. <laughs> Should I get a shirt? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Dude, May 2006. Uh, well, let's talk yeah. about that a little bit. That, that, um, well, let me ask this Did you get one of those terrible, toxic, adjustable rate mortgage loans? No, no, luckily, uh, I did not. It was a fixed, but it was <laughs> dated income, interest only. You know, it was, yeah. it was still bad. It was, it was still, still bad, bad. Just not crazy, crazy bad. Yeah. It didn't adjust on me. Thank the Lord. There you, go. Thank the Lord. you know, I was, I was able to keep that uh, house. We struggled. We struggled so hard. Um, I lost my job in February, 2009, of course. <laughs> you know, So it was, it was a tough time. I was uh, collecting unemployment and actually working at a strip club <laughs> to be honest. You but had to, you had to do what you had to do. It kept us afloat uh, until I finally found a full time job in like 20, 2011. and I've been I've been doing that full time job for since then. Oh, so I, I work. Uh, yeah, I sell pipe valves and fittings for this company. Um, nice. Well, I used to work in the warehouse, but now I sell pipe valves and fittings for Columbia Pipes. Very very um, cool. Well, let's let's go because again, I don't think enough people talk about that. I mean. There's, you know, a lot of people talk about that period, a lot of foreclosures, a lot of bad lending, but yep. there were also people that just struggled through. Right. Uh, uh, so you, you tick the top. I don't <laughs> have any idea what happened in Minneapolis. Did, how, how bad did value? It was fall? bad. You... I, it was bad. It was, uh, so we bought it for two fifteen, and <laughs> in like 2010, I think neighbors were selling for like one thirty. you know, it was like, okay. shoot. And my payment sucks you know it's, well it stayed the same which was which was great but yeah. uh we were able to make it happen it just we struggled and then in in 2011 when i got my job my full-time job i was making like 14 bucks an hour working in a working in a warehouse uh college educated <laughs> you know it was tough yeah. it was tough, time. It was tough. Um, yeah it was tough uh, but i just took the job and just kind of went through it but so in 2012, I think we, my neighbor rented out his place and went and bought another place. And I went, bing, the light bulb went off. I'm like, you know, yeah. And I went, we could do that. And so we ended up, what we did was we ended up um, moving in with her parents. Okay. And, and uh, you know, that was fun. <laughs> you know, yeah, moved yeah, in with, yeah. her, with her parents. We moved there and we, we just saved up all all the cash we could possibly do we had nice we had good tenants uh you know we were just breaking even we didn't we weren't cash flowing at all i just wanted to break even i didn't want right. a payment so we were literally saving that you know what was 16 1700 bucks a month living right. in the basement living in the basement of my in-laws and and we ended up uh saving up a bunch of money and we were always yeah. constantly looking for a house and we put an offer on a short sale it, it was like 385 and it, my wife, I'm like, don't even look at it. You know, we were looking at like 300, you know? And so it just kept coming down. It was owned by a bank or short sale. Or it wasn't, it wasn't fully foreclosed on. Um, yeah. But as soon as it hit 300, we were the first ones in the door and we made an offer at 288 and, uh, and we didn't hear yes or no, or maybe for two months. Oh, oh short sale. Yeah. 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 So, but we got it, two eighty eight, and my my neighbors, you know, this was back in Rosemount, and we were living in Rosemount. Now we live in a city called Cottage Grove, where I'm from. But 
Uh, my neighbors, when I told them how much we paid for that house, they're like, no way. Cause you know, it had traded for three eighty five before. Wow. wow. And so, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. So I, it's funny of, of all, you know, not all of them, many of the new investor stories that, that I'm hearing about, there's always this inflection point where you choose sacrifice. Mm-hmm. I got it. You're right. Going in with your in-laws living in the basement while you break even on a house. Yep. Uh, so you can just chunk money away. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, 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 that becomes ignition for, you know, this short sale at 288, right? Yeah. And, and, and that short sale at 288 was just such a blessing because it was a beautiful house and it was our forever house, you know, until okay. we moved again. But, um, it was a beautiful house and it continued to, you know, that was 2013. Right. Oh yeah. So I, I got lucky, you know? Yeah. yeah got, you ticked the got, bottom too. You ticked the I, top and the bottom. Yep. So I got lucky, but it's, it's good to get lucky every once in a while. I'd rather be lucky than good. Amen um, to that. And so we, we, so now we had, we were landlords kind of, you know, with yeah. the other house and we just kept it and, that value continued to come up, you know? Sure. And so it was now, it was like 2019 and I was getting serious about um, real estate investing, but I had, I had gotten my real estate license in 2015. And, right. and, I, and so I was still working that full-time job and then I got my real estate license and now I was an outside sales guy for this uh, pipe company. So mm-hmm. I could, service real estate mm-hmm. clients sure and you know on, you know on the side oh it's you know most of the time people want to see houses at nights and weekends so i was just hustling and making that money and what i'd do is i'd take that commission check and i just set it aside so that we yeah. could build the nest egg to buy the residential or you know a duplex i always wanted multifamily. Nice. and so um we just, I just kept saving, saving, saving. I had about fifty thousand dollars saved up, and luckily, I I did get an inheritance. I was mm-hmm. fortunate enough. Um, one of my great my great aunt and uncle lived in uh, your your world in San Jose. Okay. They, and he owned a steel company out there. You know, okay. back in the seventies. He was multi multi millionaire, but he gave me one hundred thousand dollars. Me and my mom and my brother, you know, our family, each wow. we all got a hundred grand. Wow. Um, so I took I took that, you know, I had the fifty, and I got another hundred. So I really felt comfortable with being able to pull the trigger on wow. a duplex, and okay. we bought our first duplex for like two hundred and forty thousand, mm-hmm. and I got paid on a commission, you know, but I didn't. I just like you know took. Yeah, yeah. Took, took it down, you know, played with closing costs and stuff. Yeah. Um, but that was a, that was a three bedroom up and a three bedroom down. And, and that's my buy box. There you go. You, you talk right. about buy box all the time. Yeah. And that's, I didn't realize it was then, but after I started listening to you and I started, I found you early in 2020, like in the pandemic. Nice. I was just constantly looking for something mm-hmm. and, it's you just I don't know it just resonated you know I was I was looking at bigger pockets I was looking at all these other ones but I found you in 2020 mm. and I watched I watched every day because there's nothing else to do you know <laughs> yeah and now I, I continue to watch every day but you know I just oh. I like I like your uh, calls on stuff and you do appreciate you do that. get things right <laughs> yeah yeah I appreciate that I appreciate that I want to yeah. go back to that inheritance yeah uh, because again your mom. Your brother and you got a hundred grand each. Yes. History tells me that sometimes people get inheritance and they invest it like you did. And history tells me that some people get inheritance, they don't uh, value it and they just blow it. Yeah. So did one of the others perhaps blow it and it's already gone? I I imagine. Yeah. My brother probably, it's probably gone. Yeah. My mom, my mom's old, you know, my mom's 81 almost. Um, she, she doesn't necessarily need, you know, money. She's yeah. got, she's got she just, assets and stuff. Yeah. She just plugged it away, but it's really yeah. funny, right? You and your brother both given the same gift, uh, inheritance in this case, uh, 
one of you chose to kind of ball out probably and FOMO and it goes right through the hands. And, and the other one yep. said, you know what, this is going to, this is going to, you know, allow me to take a big step forward. So it's, it's yeah. wild. It's wild. I, I see it all the time, right? When you, when you're out there and you've been doing this for 20 years, I would say yeah. 70% of people would blow the hundred grand in a year or less. Yeah, I think so. My, my uncle got it. My aunt got it. My, you know, cousin, you know, everybody got it. I, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that still has it. <laughs> you know, amazing. I, I don't, I don't necessarily have it, but I have it. Right. Yeah. It's, you know where it's, it is. It's in it's a, there. it's in a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, exactly. I got all my mortgage statements here just, just in preparation for today, but. That's very cool. Well, what does the portfolio look like today? So you still have that one. I guess let me ask the question about that one that you bought at the peak. Lots yeah. of people, you know, in that time, just dingle mail. They let it go. They let it go to foreclosure. It was probably better for you financially to let it go. So Brian, yeah. why'd you keep paying the mortgage, man? <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just thought we eventually could, it would come back. Yeah. You know, but I, I, I'm, I sell real estate. I tell my clients all the time, real estate does this, mm -hmm. but it still does this. Yeah, it's still up. You know, it still goes that way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you might be in this blip or you might be in this blip, but just stay the course and you're going to, it's going to win. You're going to win. So I think that's where it was. Um, and I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get foreclosed on. I didn't, it was yeah. just, uh, you know, yeah i no, guess it's, personal it, it, it was no, personal <laughs> and um i think that's awesome it, it really tells yeah. you all you need to know about brian and his core what he values because again i i was out there man in in my community um there were people that were almost wearing it like a badge of honor oh no i let it go oh i stuck the bank i did this i did that i'm like wow oh. that's Okay. That's weird. Uh, yeah. I yeah. I just learned something about you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, so well, yeah. the the story doesn't end with that. Uh, oh no. That, that town home. Well, when what we did was eventually we decided in twenty in February of twenty twenty, we decided to make an, a move in our lives. Okay. We decided to move from Rosemount to my hometown Cottage Grove because we were at a party the night before in Cottage Grove and all of our friends were like, hey, you should move to Cottage Grove. And I was like, oh, okay. The next morning as a realtor, I'm looking at my, you know, yeah. app yeah. and I see a house in Cottage Grove in a neighborhood that I know is awesome. And and I go, hey, honey, you totally want to screw up our whole lives? <laughs> yeah. Goes, no. yeah, let me show and, you this. Let's totally and, screw it up. And then I and then I go look at this house. And so remember February 2020. I remember we didn't we didn't know what was happening yet, but we made an offer on a <laughs> on a four hundred and sixty thousand dollar house. Oh my so, goodness! So now we're under contract, and we had because it was multiples, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I had to not be contingent upon the sale of my other house, uh -huh. but I was confident. I could. I was confident we could sell that house. We had a plenty of equity into it. It was probably at that time I was thinking it was worth three ninety five. So okay. we paid two eighty eight for it. It was now worth almost a sure. hundred thousand dollars more. Okay. Um. So anyway, got it on the market. You know, got it, got it under contract finally. Um. And and then COVID happened. <laughs> so everybody was scared. I was scared. I didn't know if I need if I wanted to buy a four hundred sixty thousand dollars house at that time. Sure. Um, but boy, I'm glad I did. Again, I got, I got lucky, you know, uh -huh. you know, so from 2020 to now our house currently that we're in is worth another hundred thousand dollars more. You know, I would imagine not that I'm going to sell it, yeah. uh, but it's nice that I got lucky. <laughs> yeah, you go. You took action. So forgive me. I don't know geography. How big, are, like how much distance? Is are there two cities forty five minutes an hour apart? Yeah, 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 thirty thirty minutes away. You know, just a just another whatever. But we okay. just wanted to be you know closer to all of our high friends school and friends and family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes, yeah. Sense. Makes sense. But in uh, that same time, I decided to sell the condo. Okay. Because 
um i wanted to take because the condo wasn't cash flowing anything yeah. and i'm going and, and i listened to some somebody i always listen to podcasts i but somebody said um if you have ec- a, a lot of equity in a house and it and your cash flow isn't making sense take that equity and buy a different asset that cash flows yeah so i was making like you know two hundred dollars a month in cash flow and i had a hundred thousand dollars worth of equity in that house now mm, yeah because i've owned it for so long right and it, and the value came back so i ended up selling that one for 232 and we may you know we had a hundred thousand dollars worth of equity in it so we took that equity and we bought another duplex oh okay so you know we you know so we got that so that was good. that was our second duplex that we owned all right. And now was that a 1031 worked. exchange or what was that? I didn't, I didn't okay. do it. You know, I just, right. I don't know. <laughs> I just uh, didn't at that point. I, I would if it was now, but I just, at that point I did not. That's right. Um, That's right. Okay. Yep. And so that, but that allowed us to be able to purchase another house. And, yeah, of course. and then I was doing well financially uh, in just selling real estate. So I was stacking up more money. Um, and I, I was, I felt like I found a, a glitch in the matrix, it, you know, like I can buy a house and I can cash flow. Like I, some, some of my properties, especially in like 2019, 2020, when the interest rates, yeah. 2021 interest rates are, you know, I'm, I got 3.375, 3.25 on duplexes all because I wasn't listening to the crap, bro. I was listening to you going, go get that money. And I'm like, oh, but it's scary and everything's high and all this stuff. But, but, but you were right. I I wish I would have bought five more. (laughs) I like that guy. He did me good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and so it was, uh, it was great because like literally, so we do section eight uh, rentals. Yep. So, and and I encourage people watching this to, if you're thinking about um, Section 8 rentals, go on to your, you know, for me, I went to St. Paul, I Googled St. Paul Section 8 standards. There are standards forever, wherever you live. And uh, and then they break it down. So it's like one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedroom. And they just tell you exactly what your rent's going to be. And it's yeah. not, and so when I talk about my buy box, uh, it's three bedrooms up, three bedrooms down. I'd prefer them to be on the side so that they, sure. they don't yell at each other. But uh, for me, I know what I can get out of a property. I can. I, I was I was buying houses for like two hundred fifty thousand, mm. and my mortgage payment was going to be like twelve hundred to thirteen hundred. Okay. And I knew a a three bedroom unit in the Section Eight program. Um, it was. 1350 then it went yeah. to 1650 and now it's at 1945 wow so let's call it two grand so you've gone from roughly 13 to two grand in like two or three years yeah or yes years. <laughs> because because they have a standard yeah, they, yeah i didn't i didn't raise the rent they did yeah. um yeah. so if if i you know like so 730 tom is the one that i bought first my payment now because tax shit went up a little bit is 1420 Okay. And my rents on it are 1900 and 1800. So 37 $3700 a month coming in the door minus my 1420. I got about 2280 in cash flow yeah. on that one. Now, I pay for water and trash and I'll have to pay for capital expenditures. So if sure. you just take out 3 400 bucks a month for that, I'm still mm-hmm. cash flowing about $2000. A month yeah. on that one. Yeah, you, even if you had to do it, you know, five hundred for capital reserves and all the act, you still fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah, it's still, yeah. It's still pretty good. It's it's cash flow. Yeah, yeah no, it's yeah, it's so go um, get another one of those. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how many of those do you want? All of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and that's that's where it, it kind of started getting fun because I was like, okay, so we can buy another one. We can give ourselves a raise. Exactly. I want to raise. <laughs> yeah, ra- raises are good. Raises are good. Uh, okay, yeah. so then go buy another property, you know? And and so now we have we have five. Five duplexes now, and they're all very similar to those numbers. So t- so 10 units, 
five, all three bedrooms up and down or side by side? Yeah, one one of them has uh, four and two. So, but okay. it's still, it's the, yeah. you know, it's, it yeah, yeah. nets out. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and they're all like, my mortgage guy was like, it's all like the same. You're yeah, doing the same. Exactly. You know? and I'm like, well, because I know what I'm, I, I, I got a box. You know? Yeah. You got a buy box. Yeah. Exactly. That's amazing. And, it, and, and so, like I said, I felt like I found a little cheat code, the you know? Yeah. Cheat yeah. Code. Like, I love and I and that. I wish I wish I could have got more people to do it with me it, when interest rates yes. were three yeah, percent. But there was, people there was... people were all scared. They're like, "Oh, it's not a good time to buy. Everything's so high." I'm like, "Well, doesn't matter if it cash flows." Yeah, exactly. Do the math. Do the math. Yeah, let's yeah, take a, a look of, at a lot, it. A lot of people don't get it. Um, yeah. How frequently do you and your wife talk about money? We used to a lot. Um, you know. We did, we did Dave Ramsey, you know, you know, yeah. when, we're, when we were broke. Um, and I don't necessarily, I did Dave Ramsey ish, you know, yeah. he, I, I did most of Dave Ramsey. I don't, I, I believe in borrowing money and using it. Yeah. 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 But I, again, he, I think Dave Ramsey he, helps a lot of people. So I'm, I'm okay. With yep. That. Yeah. yeah. He's always you know, great. Believe me. It, it gave us the foundation to be able to talk about money and yeah, you know, I love, exactly. I love how he thought, you know, he, he, he tells you to have gazelle in pen, you know, cause yeah. there's cheetahs out there trying to take your money. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. so you gotta be like a gazelle. Uh, but yeah, no. So we did that. We did, we do talk about money uh, enough. I wish we budgeted better, <laughs> but yeah, life creep, you know, yeah, life yeah, creep happens. it's happened to me too. It's happened to me too. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. Um, so where where do you go from here? Are you are, are you kind of on a path where you see yourself adding a duplex a year kind of thing, or where, where, where's the that's, path taking? That, that's yeah, that kind of was my thought process. But now that I'm at five, you know, you always talk about get the four, it'll change your right. life. Yeah. Well, I got the four, and then I I was like, well, I kind of want another one, and yeah. and, a, and a beautiful one came up. It's probably, I mean, it's the most expensive one I ever bought. It's three hundred twenty five thousand dollars, and but it's a beautiful duplex you know yeah. um but now i'm kind of like geez it, so i self-manage and it's just it, it gets to be it, it's yeah. it's a lot you know but for um i was just talking to my friend before uh and because i'm trying to get him to get into it too yeah and he's like so is it worth it though i'm like well yeah i mean yeah it, it is <laughs> it, it is yeah. It, you know, just think how much how much crap you do at a nine to five, right? You know, for right. three, four, five grand a month. You know, you're constantly working. You know, forty plus hours a week. So I'm willing to be able to do the stuff, yeah, because it's worth it. That's amazing. You know? What kind of advice, Brian, do you have for people? Maybe, uh, maybe they got the bug over the holiday season. Um, but they don't own anything yet. What what are some kind of early advice you'd have for someone? I would get on YouTube and follow you and all the guys that we kind of deal with and learn as much as possible. And so I just told my buddy, Slim, I said, hey, dude, when you're driving around, mm -hmm. instead of listening to the radio, yeah. get on YouTube and, and listen to whatever you want to listen to to get better that yeah. if it's real estate investing great if it's not whatever it is but it i would yeah. feed your brain while you're driving because you're oh, going to be yeah. sitting there doing anything nothing anyway so yeah I, I would i would learn if you want to become a real estate investor get on youtube and just watch a bunch of guys like yourself because they'll they'll teach you little nuggets here and there and you might not learn it all in one day but if you just be consistent like you say uh, you know, be consistent, do the work yeah. and then, and then find a realtor that can help you work out the numbers, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and then if it cash flows, great. There Try to go. work on how to, how, how are you going to, how are you going to buy it? You know, you yeah. that's, that's the hard part of saving up the money. There you go. You well, know, 25%. Thank you for... Yeah. 25% is <laughs> a big number, right? Well, Brian, yep. thank you for doing this the day after Christmas. The audience, I'm yep. sure, appreciates it. Uh, do you have a social media following or where people can 
watch you? Uh, I don't. I, I'm thinking about starting a, a YouTube channel because you guys have kind of been pushing that too, which uh, is awesome. But I just, I haven't, I don't have it yet. But I, I am a real estate agent in the Twin Cities area. If you're in the Twin okay. Cities area, you know, you can find me on the, yeah. on the internet. There you go. Well, Brian, you're amazing, man. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you day after Christmas. Take care. Thanks, Michael. You got it.